There's this one thing that almost all artists try to avoid, like the plague, and it's typically referred to as phasing. That is, until James Cho came out with this awesome piece. So it's pretty simple. Phasing, or meshing, or whatever you want to call it, is basically when the objects go over one another and don't align, or they cross paths in a way that's unappealing. And most of the time, you work really hard to avoid this unless it's very deliberate. But in this case, it looks really cool. So I'm going to try and remake it and also see if I can't create a, an effect just like it using the same principles. So the first big thing that I'm going to do is just get a character from basically anywhere. I like human gen because it's realistic, quick, and it works well with the animation side that I'm going to implement later. You can really use um, anything, even like Blender Kit I know has a ton of fun characters, like uh, Pokemon apparently. <laughs> and actually I'm going to use Blender Kit it to create our sort of environment first. Just drag in a few rocks here and there. Now it's actually kind of funny when you hit bash like this with regular rocks, you're also kind of phasing and creating a sort of mesh effect. But with rocks, it's a lot easier to make it look more natural. I'm just gonna throw in a really quick volume cube just to get the overall effect going and see where we want to take it from there. Looking back and forth at our reference with James Cho, I see that they're balancing on faces and there's some rocks in the background, so I'm going to try and stick close to that. Let me put one of these big full rocks in the background. Now, this doesn't always work, but I tried it earlier and it wasn't bad. I used an HDRI with a fog and it turned out pretty okay. One thing I've been doing with my backgrounds Instead of going for the usual film transparent, I basically do this node group where I tie it into a background and then just chain, change it to a darker background and uh, have the light path or the, the factor between the mix shader as camera ray. And so that just keeps it focused, keeps the background blank, but we still get those really nice reflections and colors and everything in the back here. So now that we've got our scene set up, I'm going to go in and grab a little FBX from Mixamo. And the way that I did that was I just exported our human gen as an OBJ and brought it into Mixamo. And now what I want to do is I'm going to use Rococo add-on, which is free, totally able to use, and it's going to retarget our character here. Rococo is also the sponsor of this video. I have a link down below you can use to get 5% off your purchase. Uh, Rococo is obviously number one in motion capture technology. Definitely check them out if you haven't. Their retargeting tool has always been very straightforward. All we're going to do is take the source armature that we had from Mixamo, plug it right into our guy named Woodrow. It's a great name. And automatically build the bone list for us and then retarget animation and then voila works just like that and we have a really fast animation here more or less so i'm gonna bring that down by going into the graph editor normalizing a for everything and then scale on the x by 10 let's say and then now the way to get this phasing effect i believe is you just highlight everything and then shift D and then with the new armature selected, you're just going to hit grab on the X by 10. Now it looks like they're a little too close. I think that works for us. Now again, going back to our reference, they've got these oversized characters in the background. So I'm going to go in and duplicate some of those as well. So we can get that sort of mystical hierarchy. Coming back here into rendered mode, I have the idea for what I'm looking for. Go ahead and set up my camera from again position of our reference focal length a little longer because i think that really sells it and shortens our field of view here 
Now, one more big thing that I wanted to throw in here that I thought was really cool is a sort of material that likes to work with the meshing idea that we have. And I had never heard of this until last week, but it's very cool. And it's called the Ray Portal BSDF. And if you haven't heard of this, it's, it's very interesting. Basically what's going on is it's somehow calculating the rays that are happening in front of it, I guess maybe via bouncing or something like that. And it's contorting them and making it into a pseudo mirror that is really interesting, but you can distort this mirror and make it look much more like there's something weird that you're phasing through basically. I'm going to tie this into a transparent node with an ambient inclusion so that it looks like it's more of a mist that is running through our characters rather than this sort of just like solid box plane, basically. And I'll just see. All right, I think that works pretty well. So we've still got our effect, but it's also sort of transparent wherever it's not touching things so that you can see through it contort this again so that it doesn't just look like some sort of weird funky mirror. I think that works. Again, I piped it into a wave texture. Wave just has a little less detail and so it lets us know what's going on, but it also shows us that there is something else happening. And it's not just, again, a, a mirror. One last thing you can do is you can come in here and change the rotation of this. And this is where things get pretty interesting if you're not careful. But so it can almost look as though he's forming through these ray casts, which is, again, just so interesting. You Anywhere else, you would have to really play around with geometry nodes to get this type of effect. And here we are getting it for free at relatively very fast speeds. Now, it's not mesh, so you can't do much more with it, but it's still very cool. It's very fascinating. There's a lot of little fun things that can happen here. Obviously, as he's dancing through the scene, it also looks fascinating. There's all these sort of little hiccups here and there that make it more interesting. Trail following behind him. And then I, and that is the dust particles from Creative Trim. Uh, if you haven't seen these, I think there's a free version. It's really nice, really simple to use. You just throw it in and it automatically aligns these really cool dust particles to your camera and it works. It's set up automatically. You just got to tweak a few settings here and it's good to go. Now, one thing I did notice is it starts off super fast. So you need to uh, just make sure that you turn down the movement here. I'm liking where that is. You know what? I just realized I didn't really give them a sort of headdress like reference. And so I think I'm going to add that really quick and just put it in there and maybe Maybe even have some of these sort of, uh, it's just so convenient and easy. I'm just using a child of constraint. It's pretty straightforward. It just makes whatever bone you need into a parent. And it's just a little bit simpler than having it, having to go in and parent things. Now, I think what I'm going to do is actually go back and delete these guys and just duplicate them again. Again, just moving each one back on the X 10 paces. So it's close, but it's not too far behind. It's still meshing and phasing, but it looks, it's not too far apart from it either. And that's just preference, really. You could probably go 15 or whatever. With that, I'm just going to keep adding some little other details here so that it all coalesces and makes sense again, like our reference. So we've got this animation happening. We've got these different things going on in the background. Let's keep going from there. One of the things that James Cho likes to do, I've seen, is he creates these blinking lights. And I think that's really fascinating. So I'm going to, by just throwing some noise straight into the power right here. So keep that noise in there for some variation. Okay. Now from here, basically for the shots that I'm going to animate, I'm just going to keep it really close to what we already had for the reference. I'm thinking about having the mirror part that we talked about maybe start from the bottom and then work its way up so it moves with us throughout the animation. I'm not sure yet. Let's see how it goes. One cool thing that I again learned about way too late was the fact that you can set up these lights 
to not affect the volume scatter by just going into the object data properties and turning off volume scatter it makes a huge difference it's so much better illuminated it gives it so much more light and depth and it doesn't make things soupy in your volume it's absolutely wonderful i'm just gonna throw this in there to start and then see if i like it or not and then i'm just gonna use bind cameras to markers and duplicate and come up with a rhythm that i think makes sense and super easy way to do this so that your camera is duplicated is just click on it right here in the outliner hit shift d and then make sure your camera is orange and hit marker again bind camera to marker and then just delete those old keyframes and you've got a whole new scene ready to go already lined up and everything and right now i'm just art directing choosing which scene makes sense again going back and forth between this and our reference and seeing what makes sense what worked for them what's going to maybe work for us so right now it kind of looks interesting i am thinking that i want it to warp a little bit more so i need to come in here and just change some of these settings this is definitely weird but weird's kind of what we're going for right now so again we'll take our camera and our empty make sure the camera selected first duplicate and then just hit on camera to marker actually you know what i think i'm gonna pull this one it's just a little bit too fast so i think i'm gonna take it out and just do four shots so we've got a little bit of a mess to clean up here what we're gonna do is not that we're gonna select our cameras and then just change these little points here to degrees of 90. so that means you can also highlight and then just hit snap selection to current frame and then 270 right Yes, 270. And make sure you move your camera markers to the right frames as well. Let's watch that and see all the stuff we just did. Go ahead and maybe give this guy a, I don't know, statue marble texture. On. There we go. Not too bad at all. Let's change this last frame and then be good to render. All right. We got some blinking lights. We got mesh meshes going all over, intersecting with one another, being doing weird things, and it all looks kooky and cinematic and uh i think that's it i think that's where we want to be i'm going to drop some of these files in my patreon so give that a look and links will be in the description for other things check those out if you're curious about learning blender and let me know if you like these sort of cinematic animation tutorials i know they can be weird and kooky and sort of abstract but i think that a lot of people are doing it and it could be a lot of fun so tell me if you like it in the comments so i could do more maybe something else and thank you for watching